Hello, this is Patrick McNeil from Oak City Locksport. If you're a new subscriber, thank you for joining. Many of you, I'm sure, found your way here after Deviant encouraged you to follow us. When he and I saw that our numbers were going up, he mentioned that once we reached 751 subscribers, that I should have to make a CH751 key video. All by itself, I thought that might be kind of boring, so I thought I might cover my personal keychain of doom today as a way of saying thanks to Deviant. So this keychain of doom is actually based on a couple of Deviant's talks. The first one was Howard Payne in Deviant at the 11th Hope Conference called This Key is Your Key, This Key is My Key. And it covered a bunch of things, including common key systems. Common keys are basically seen when someone building a product that needs a lock just bulk orders from the lock manufacturing company. It's way cheaper for that lock manufacturing company to just send them lots of the same key to like lock versus key different locks. So the second talk was then Deviant's I'll Let Myself In, Tactics of Physical Pen Testers from the Wild West Hacking Fest, where, amongst other things, Deviant covered his everyday key ring. So my key ring varies a little bit from his. I have a couple of keys on here that, uh, or a couple of items on here that he doesn't have, and there are a couple of things that I left off, so I'll cover that. Um, all these keys, for the most part, can be ordered on eBay or other places online, and they do have lots of uses. So as I list some of the functions for these keys, understand that there may very well be other, other devices and things that you'll find these on. You just have to go through and try all your keys. So the, the first style of key that I'll cover are those used for cam-style wafer locks. And on here, the first one we'll start with is the C415A key. This became notable because it was used in uh, Diebold voting machines and uh, a lot of fun in jukebox cabinets. The next couple, if you actually look in your drawers at home, you're very likely to have uh, one or both of these because they are way more common than any other one. The first one is the CH751, which you'll find in some gas pumps, most notably RVs manufactured within the U.S., so definitely uh, this is not going to start the, uh, the ignition, but it will open doors and cabinets and any other uh, little lock that would normally be used just to keep things closed in the RV. Uh, it'll also open alarm panels, electrical enclosures, industrial key switches, and the most fun key storage boxes that may be used to store other keys, sometimes even high security keys behind this little piece of garbage. The next one is the 501CH or Hudson 501, and this will function on some industrial key switches and actually a lot of toolboxes and, and job boxes used for the construction industry. I've got a couple more here that I purchased from Rubber Band at DEF CON this year. The E005 and the Hudson B key. So very similar to uh, all of the other wafer keys, these will actually open electrical enclosure boxes and most notably roof racks and ski racks. So the next lock to show you is one that uh, Deviant and Tool came up with years ago, and we made this at, uh, I believe it was CarolinaCon 7. This is the universal handcuff key, and you can see this is a Smith & Wesson blank, and it's been shortened on the front a little bit, shortened on the back, and there is a notch cut in the middle so that this will function on not just single cam uh, style handcuffs, uh, or sorry, sing, single pole handcuffs, but also double pole handcuffs. So if you source the Smith & Wesson key blank, find uh, Deviant's talk on handcuff stuff on deviating.net, and you can see how to make one of these. 
Uh, so for those cam style locks, if you don't happen to have the key, this is another item I like to have. These are covert jigglers sourced from lockpicktools.com. So basically the way jiggling works is you move the, the uh, jiggler in and out of the lock very quickly while turning on it slightly. And I found if I don't have the key for one of these wafer locks, I can typically get through it pretty quickly. The next thing on this keychain is a bit of a, a deviation from uh, uh, Deviance Everyday Carry. This is actually called a quick stick, also from lockpicktools.com. And this is used for bypassing um, cheap padlocks that only have a single lever holding the shackle uh, in and ones that are also unshielded. So on a padlock, you should not be able to stick something all the way to the back and grab the lever. There should be something stopping you from doing that. So if it is a cheap padlock, this attack may work. The next couple of keys are both used for uh, telephony access control boxes. So this is the A126 Lanier key and the Door King Systems key 16120. Basically the way these work is you will see these telephony entry systems on the outside of a building, kind of like on the wall near the door. Um, or maybe at the entrance to a parking lot. And there's typically a call button, so maybe you could talk to somebody in security, or you actually enter uh, a small series of numbers and talk to somebody in a particular apartment or office. These will allow you to open up the faceplate of the uh, telephony entry system and either uh, short a, a relay or actually hit a momentary release button so you can open the door. Just be careful some of those telephony entry systems may actually have tamper alarms and you'll set off an alarm. The next couple of keys here, um, Deviant had on his the CC1, this is a club car uh, golf cart key, and I just added one of the other more common golf cart keys uh, into my collection. This is the Easy Go or E1 key just also another really common golf cart uh, type of key. I put this on because I had a physical pen test coming up where I knew there were golf carts and I wasn't quite sure what I was going to run into. Now the last thing I'll show you was something that I also purchased from Rubber Band. And this is actually a quick set key that has been cut with the key depths from one to six. So the, que the quick set standard pinning system actually has seven depths. So we can infer that if it's lower, the lower than the sixth cut, that this would be number seven. And what this allows you to do, if you take it off your key ring, is to decode a key that you might actually have uh, temporary access to. So what you can do here is just line up the bottom of the key and then we can move this back and forth to see which cut it lines up with or each each one of the cuts in this key line up with on the decoder so it's a very uh, kind of covert method of you know decoding somebody else's key now if you're familiar with deviance key ring you'll notice that there's a couple of keys that I opted not to put on there uh, one is the Ford Fleet Key 1284X used by law enforcement agencies. Um, and the other is the FEO K1 Fire Emergency Elevator Key. I just felt that having the Ford Fleet Key was probably something I was A, never going to use, and B, if I was found with it, maybe could get me into trouble. Um, the FEO K1 causes elevators to go to the ground floor and can be pretty noisy when it's activated. So instead, I've opted to build myself a separate key ring with just elev elevator supervisory keys. So that's all I have for you today. Thanks again for joining the channel, and I hope to continue to provide you with quality content. Thank you.